welcome back to my inner sanctum. I am your hostess, Countess Elizabeth, mistress of the macabre. Sometimes people like to show off, give a little flair, and not think about the consequences. Today's tale is just that, someone who wanted to show off and not think about the consequences of their reckless behavior. Today, we will go to the snowy Italian Alps, where a tragedy occurred, all because someone wanted to show off without regards for safety. This is the story of the Cavalese cable car disaster. So, let us take our seats inside a cable car going up the slopes so we can explore our grotesque curiosity. On the sunny morning of February 3rd, 1998, in the Dolomite Mountains outside the Italian town of Cavalese, four Marine officers were on a training mission in the Marine Corps EA-6B Prowler, a four-seat aircraft designed for electronic warfare. Over a ski resort, where the pilots performed low-altitude flight maneuvers for fun, the plane struck a cable supporting a bright yellow gondola car. The victims inside free fell 260 feet onto the rocks and snow below. The Straja del Charmi, Italian for Massacre of Charmis, named for the mountain ridge where the bodies were recovered, claimed the lives of eight Germans, five Belgians, three Italians, two Poles, one Dutch, and one Austrian, 20 people in total. The plane was manned by Marine Captain Richard Ashby, a 30-year-old on his final training flight before promotion to fighter pilot, and Captain Joseph Schweitzer, a navigator with a decade of flight experience, Captain William Rainey, and Captain Chandler Seagraves, electronic warfare officers, were in the back seat. Seagraves was a member of the incoming unit that was scheduled to replace Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 2 in Aviano, so he was less familiar with the other three Marines on board. He joined the ill-fated flight at the last minute for training in low-altitude flying. During the flight, Schweitzer borrowed Ashbury's handheld video camera to record his swan song, his last aerial navigation as Marine Corps pilot before he left the military. Schweitzer testified that he had intended to show the video to his kids someday. The plane lost contact with the ground radar at 3.06 p.m. due to its low altitude, and Schweitzer testified, the video showing him smiling right up until 3.12 p.m. when the plane hit the gondola cable. After hitting the cable, the pilots saw the gondola fall but continued their flight. They landed at the damaged prowler safely at a NATO base in Aviano in northern Italy. Court documents show that as Rainey and Seagraves got off the plane, Schweitzer and Ashby remained behind, took the borrowed camcorder videotape of the flight, then replaced it with a blank tape. Italian officials spent the day and night recovering the remains of 20 people on a snowy ridge stained red. Here you can see footage provided by AP of the aftermath of this incident. The Italian government launched a criminal investigation and the Marine Corps followed suit. As Schweitzer and Ashby walked to the mess hall a few days after the incident, they asked Seagraves advice on handling questions about the videotape. According to court documents, Seagraves testified that he counseled the pilots to get rid of the tape. If it were mine, I would get rid of it, he said. Court documents show that Ashby gave Schweitzer the videotape, and Schweitzer took it outside a bar and threw it into a bonfire. Despite knowing that Italian and United States military criminal investigators would have wanted to view it, according to his testimony. Initially, all four men were charged with crimes, and Ashby, who had been at the controls, faced a total of more than 200 years in military prison. 
Schweitzer and Ashby were recommended for general court-martial at Camp Lejeune on 20 counts of involuntary manslaughter and negligent homicide. Italian authorities did not have jurisdiction to formally charge the crew members under NATO treaty rules, and the trial was held inside the United States. During the captain's court-martial, defense lawyers argued that the flight crew was not given the most recent flight directives or maps that marked the location of the cable lines, and that the plane's altimeter malfunctioned, and that that's the reason why they flew too low. The pilot, Captain Richard J. Ashby, and his navigator, Captain Joseph Schweitzer, were found not guilty on involuntary manslaughter and negligent homicide. The pilot's acquittal sparked outrage and condemnation from Italian officials and strained relationships between the U.S. and Italy. I mean, why wouldn't it? It seems the U.S. is covering up the deaths of these 20 civilians. The plane's pilot and navigator, Ashby and Schweitzer, were court-martialed again in May of 1999 on charges of obstructing justice by destroying the videotape recorded during the flight. Guilty verdicts pushed Ashby and Schweitzer out of the Marine Corps, and Ashby served four months of a six-month term in military prison before his release on good behavior. Oh, okay. So he sure got off lightly considering he killed 20 people. Italy paid a total of 39.3 million US dollars for the families of the dead, who received 1.9 million dollars per victim. The U.S. Congress rejected a bill introduced by the late South Carolina Senator Strom Thurmond that would have established a $40 million compensation fund for the families. But under NATO treaty rules, the U.S. was compelled to send Italy $28.5 million in victim compensation. Ashby and Schweitzer maintained they had seen neither the new directives nor the updated government maps. They claimed, No, we absolutely did not have the charts with cables marked on them, Rainey said. The Italians had cables marked on their maps, but we did not. And there was a two-star general who flat out lied about it in a press conference. When Major General DeLong, the chief investigator, announced the findings of the investigation board, he said that they were marked on the map. But that was a lie. A flat out lie. Seagraves and Rainey testified the altitude gauge did not trigger after the plane entered the Chermi Valley, even though Ashby had set the indicator to go off when they dropped below 800 feet. The crew member's testimony at trial contradicted the U.S. documents published in July 2011 by the Italian daily La Stampa newspaper. The newspaper said these previously classified documents were from a U.S.-led investigation dated March 1998, a month after the incident. It reported that they were certified by then-Lieutenant General Peter Pace. The documents cited by La Stampa show that the investigators testified they found a letter in the cockpit of the Prowler containing the new directives, along with maps marking the gondola cables. Prior to the accident, the paper reported, the crew received warnings for Top Gun-like antics, such as barrel rolls, and flying underneath other gondola cables. The investigation's partially redacted pages blamed the Marine pilots for the tragedy and advised the United States to take full responsibility for paying restitution to the victims' families, La Stampa reported. The paper added that investigators found compelling evidence refuting the crew members' claims regarding old maps and missed flight directives that eventually led to Schweitzer and Ashby's acquittal on the most severe charges. Seagraves, the late addition to the flight, received immunity on condition he revealed the truth about everything during the initial Marine Corps investigation and court-martial. So in 2015, the guy who sat in the back seat of the plane during the flight was promoted to colonel, reigniting the issue of his lack of formal reprimand for advising the pilots to destroy the tape. He began transitioning into the retirement from the Marine Corps in November 2017. Back in August 1997, the Italian government published new directives forbidding flights below 2,000 feet in the Trentino Alto Aldage area. La Stampa reported that in the months before the February accident, all four Marine officers received copies of the new flight directives and updated maps that marked the location of the gondola cables. During the first trial, prosecutors claimed Ashby violated Marine Corps policy by exceeding the 517 mile per hour speed limit and flying well below the 2,000 foot altitude restriction. The prowler was going 621 miles per hour when it cut the supporting cable lines. 370 feet above the ground, according to the court transcripts. Court transcripts quote Carol K. Joyce, head of the prosecution team, and a then lieutenant colonel, saying, A crew member in the back seat 
would testify that Ashby did a barrel roll. Well, that was truly a grotesque tale, where Ashby wanted to show off without consequence or thought of the people who were in those cable cars. He just wanted to look cool and be a daredevil at this expense of 20 lives. He didn't care that he took those people's lives, and there was no justice for those lost souls who just wanted to have a nice time at the slopes. May their souls rest in peace. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe, like, and share if you would also like to keep exploring our grotesque curiosity. We'll meet again in the darkness of the night.